Hi, I'm Brian Currier, tutoring high school biology. Today's topic, the reproductive and endocrine systems. Let's start out with the endocrine system. That releases chemical messages into the bloodstream known as hormones, as opposed to the nervous system which releases them through electrical impulse. Now these hormones can only bind to specific cells, target cells if you will. Any other type won't be able to affect them. Let's look at the two types of hormones, steroid hormones and non-steroid hormones. Steroid hormones, or steroids, will actually enter the cell. They'll pass straight through the cell membrane and bind to receptors on the DNA to cause transcription and the creation of mRNA. These are more powerful than non-steroid hormones because they directly affect DNA expression. Non-steroid hormones, on the other hand, will bind to receptors in the membrane and cause indirectly changes in cell function. Let's look at the glands in the endocrine system. We have the hypothalamus, which controls the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland, which regulates most of the glands in the endocrine system. The pineal gland, which regulates rhythmic activities, things like waking up, falling asleep. We also have the parathyroid gland, regulates blood calcium. The pancreas, regulates blood sugar. The thymus, this helps build the immune system in children. The adrenal glands, also known as the epinephral glands, these will help you cope with stress, or cause it. Imagine running away from something that you really don't want catching you. Then we have the reproductive organs. These double as endocrine glands. For females, we have the ovary, secretes progesterone and estrogen. The female sex hormones, you'll see those at work during puberty and ovulation. Then we have the testes, secrete testosterone, at work again during puberty for men and also for men, sexual activity. Not all in women. <laughs> okay, on that note, let's go to the reproductive system. We're going to look at sperm maturation in men and ovulation in women both of which will cover most of those reproductive systems. Anyway, you'll need to know this for biology. Okay, in the male reproductive system, testes are the main, if you will, organs. These are actually composed of a bunch of tubes wound up over and over again, seminiferous tubes. This is where sperm is created. Sperm then move on to the epididymis. This is where they mature. Okay, here's a basic sperm cell. At the head, we have this filling of chemicals that will be used to penetrate the ovum. We also have the tail. This is filled with mitochondria to help it swim. All right, past the epididymis, the sperm will then go into the vas deferens, a tube leading ultimately to the urethra and the penis, therefore exiting the body. Okay, over to ovulation in the females. Ovulation is the release of an ovum, or egg. Ova are generally produced early on in the life and sit around until most of them are used up. And uh, one is released every month following puberty. Let's see how this happens. The ovum is kept in something called a follicle, and once a month, an ovum is released. The ovum will then travel through the fallopian tubes in the uterus. The follicle, on the other hand, will become something called the corpus luteum. This will secrete the female sex hormones. This causes the development of the uterine lining, which is, if you will, a lining on the uterus. This is highly nutritious and will help nourish a developing child, if one happens to occur. Anyway, back to the ovum. This enters the uterus. If it gets fertilized, it will embed itself in the uterine lining and the child will develop. If not, the ovum dies and the uterine lining is shed through the cervix, through the vagina, and out the body. And that's it for ovulation. To recap, the endocrine system functions through chemical messages known as hormones. These will bind only to target cells. There are two types of hormones. Steroid hormones, which will enter the cell and bind to DNA, directly affecting its expression, and non-steroid hormones, which will indirectly cause changes in the cell by binding to receptors in the membrane. The glands in the endocrine system are the hypothalamus, controls the pituitary, pituitary regulates most glands, the pineal gland regulates rhythmic activities, parathyroid gland regulates blood calcium, pancreas regulates blood sugar, thymus regulates the immune system in children, the adrenal or epinephral glands which help cope with stress, the ovaries for women which will secrete female sex hormones, and the testes for men which secrete male sex hormones. In spermatogenesis, or the creation of sperm, sperm are created in the testes, which are actually wound up seminiferous tubes. From there, the sperm moves on to the epididymis, where it matures, and then to the vas deferens, a tube leading ultimately to the urethra and out the body. In the female reproductive system, we can look at ovulation. Here, an ovum leaves a follicle. The follicle will become a corpus luteum, which will help release female sex hormones to develop the uterine lining, which will help nourish a developing child if one happens to occur. The ovum will travel through the fallopian tubes into the uterus, where it will embed itself in the uterine lining if fertilized, otherwise it will die and the uterine lining will be shed through the cervix and through the vagina, out the body, 
And that's it for ovulation. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Preer. See you next time.